Hello, welcome to Kerry for the first episode of A Fish in the Spotlight. In this series we will take a look at our fish that we keep in the saltwater hobby. Where and how do they live in nature? How to keep them in an aquarium? These are the questions I hope to give an answer to. So for the first fish in the spotlight we will take a look at probably the most known fish there is. Yes of course, the clownfish. The clownfish is also named an enemy fish. 30 species are recognized, one in the genus Premnas, while the remaining are in the genus Amphiprion. In the wild, all form symbiotic mutualisms with sea anemones. Depending on species, anemone fish are overall yellow, orange or a reddish or blackish color, and many show white bars or patches. The largest can reach a length of 15 to 16 centimeters, that's 5.9 to 6.3 inches, while the smallest barely achieve 7 to 8 centimeters, that's 2.8 to 3.1 inches. The most famous clownfish we all know is Nemo. Of course, from the Disney movie Finding Nemo. Nemo, he is an Amphiprion ocellaris. They are the most common together with the percola. Anemone fish are native to the warmer waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, including the Great Barrier Reef and the Red Sea. While most species have restricted distributions, others are widespread. Anemone fish live at the bottom of shallow seas in sheltered reefs or in shallow lagoons. No anemone fish are found in the Atlantic. Anemone fish and sea anemones have a symbiotic mutualistic relationship, each providing a number of benefits to the other. The sea anemone protects the anemone fish from predators, as well as providing food through the scraps left from the anemone's meals and occasional dead anemone tentacles. And it functions as a safe nest site. In return, the anemone fish defends the anemone from its predators. An example is the coral butterfly fish. The stinging from an anemone is not harmful to the anemone fish, because the mucus coating from the fish is recognized by the anemone. In a group of anemone fish, a strict dominance hierarchy exists. The largest and most aggressive female is found at the top. She will only reproduce with the largest male. Anemone fish are sequential hermaphrodites, meaning they develop into males first. If the female is removed from the group, such as by death, one of the largest and most dominant males becomes a female. The remaining males move up a rank in the hierarchy. Now we will take a look at keeping anemone fish in our aquariums. For the most, we call them clownfish. I think it's much easier than anemone fish. So, more and more clownfish are captive bred these days. A bene benefit from that is that the fish are hardier and adapt better to a life in an aquarium. And for me the biggest benefit is that there will not be a huge demand for wild caught fish. Clownfish can be aggressive to each other and their surroundings. Therefore it is advised to keep only one couple in an aquarium. There can be exceptions with a really large tank or a species only tank. The most common clownfish kept is the ocellaris. It will grow to a maximum length of 11 cm, that's 4.3 inches. Because of the captive breeding there are now some mutations on the market, known as designer clowns. Some examples are Frostbite, Wyoming White, Picasso, Black Snowflake and many more. There is also one with long fins. Provide your clownfish with an anemone or another coral to host in. 
In a lot of cases they will also host leather coral, like the toadstools, or some LPS. In an aquarium it is possible that it takes some time before your clowns will host an anemone or another coral. In some cases they will never do so. You can try to force them, but patience is a good thing. As last, clownfish like a pH of 8.1 to 8.5, a temp of 73.5 to 78.8. And that's in uh, Celsius degrees, it's 24 to 26. Uh, salinity from 1.023 to 1.026. And clownfish love a tank size of minimum, minimum 20 gallons. Clownfish can get to 5 years old, but with good care and water quality, they can probably live much longer. You can feed them live or frozen foods such as Mises or Artemia. They also eat flakes or pellets. Well, this was it for today. I hope you can do something with the info provided by me. If you have any questions, leave them behind in the comment section below and give a like to support me. Are you not a subscriber yet? Then hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell next to it. Thank you and I see you all again soon.